extra. Okay, right here, like that, some tea. Super. <clears throat> hey babe, what kind of tea is this? What That's the rasta tea with the... The rasta tea? Yes, with the capsule. The, oh, 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 one of those. The, the, the last one, the and a capsule. Oh, 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 you, so, so you use the, that fancy capsule to whatever it is. Yes, and then you, the pure cap. Then you use the, the, the herbs that we got from the Rasta. Yes. Oh, okay. It's wonderful. Hmm. Interesting, babe. Ah, hmm. uh, but I got I got something to do here, baby. Uh, talk to the peoples. A little lineage thing here. Oh, I don't think I need my, I gotta read. This my, oh, okay, let me stop with this. Oh, first of all, I'm wearing my Made in Alice, uh, you might call it jumper, but these things uh, uh, in, in, in South Africa, where we're sitting here, in Alice, South Africa, uh, these kind of uh, you, um, jumpsuits, whatever have you, at first of all, by miners, you know, the whole miner thing, you know, stimuli, you know, uh, uh, but nothing, you know. Uh, and also, uh, uh, currently these were by prisoners, you know, the orange jumpsuits, so it's kind of interesting. This is a thing called Made in Alice. It's an initiative that started by a cat here in Alice um, that it has been going on for, I don't know, six, seven years? How many years? When I first got here, it was like in its third year. Anyway, it's an initiative. It's like an all-night party. It comes on around about, you know, right before, right before, uh, about December 22nd, something like that. And the money they use for that, they raise a lot of money. Boy, it's a huge, huge thing. Uh, you know, um, a lot of house music and stuff like that. Uh, but also, uh, uh, they collect, they you know, make enough money to give bursaries to uh, local uh, schools. So that's what they do. Um, but it's interesting because uh, made, made, where were you made? This is the question. Where were you made? This is whole thing. You were made where you had. Well, let me speak for uh, 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 American descendant of slavery, or you know, uh, black natives, or whatever we're calling us, black natives. You know, the, the cats that went through the middle passage and they held, you know, the antebellum and the, and the slavery and the antebellum and the Jim Crow and the lynchings and the, you know, the red line and the, you know, the whole, the whole thing that, that the ADOSS movement is talking about. Okay, so we have this thing, where were you made? It, it, this is a blues kind of thing. I learned it from this, uh, this guy, he's a blues man from, I think, South Carolina, something like that. And he was living in New York for a long time. I, I used to do a lot of interviewing with this man. And uh, I said, well, wait a second, you, you, you know, you call yourself South Carolina Slim, whatever his name was. He said, yeah, because I was, in, but you live in, you've been living in New York for the last 20 years or 30 years. He says, yeah, but I was made in South Carolina. So I, that was interesting. Where were you made? It's a good question. Where were you made? Which basically means, where did you have your first fight? That's what it means in, well, in the Patterson Projects, that's what we talk. Where you had your first fight? Well, I had my first fight in the Patterson Projects. So I was, in fact, made in, South, in, in, in the Patterson Projects. Anyway, okay. So this is, a, this is an interesting question, where were you made? But that's one, thing, that's one identifying thing, where you were made. Uh, but the other thing is like, you know, who are you? What's, what, I came across this thing uh, because uh, I was in Cape Town from 2003 to 2013, something like that. Then I came to uh, Alice University for here. And so uh, my, part of my project, my, my research group, is in Dimbaza. It's a very famous thing. The last grave of Dimbaza is a film. It's a very famous area. Right up from King Williamstown, which is where Steve, Steve Biko was born. You know where it is. His grave is there. Anyway, and so, in, in, uh, so I've been working with, with, uh, with groups, you know, all, th all the whole 10 years I was in Cape Town, there were people, a lot, a lot of people from all over, the, all over the map come to Cape Town to live, okay? So my main groups were in uh, Dimbaza, uh, not in Dimbaza, Dimbaza's here, was in, um, was in Danoon, very rough area, um, also Felipe, uh, uh, I guess I should say this, shout out to Marcus Garvey Village, Marcus Garvey Village is in Felipe. Um, where, where the, that's where a whole Rasta community is. In fact, um, that's where I went to Tabernacle. In, um, so you know, all that time there, you know, people, who's your name, blah, 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 blah. Okay, good. Now, when I got to Dimbaza, I was working with a group of young people, an introduction, da, 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 and they just started talking, you know, they said, my name is blah, 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 and then they went this whole long thing about their, their last name. And I said, well, what, what, how, well, how many last names do you have? Why well, I didn't say it like that, something like that. They said, well, that's our clan name. I said, your clan name? I never heard, what do you mean your clan name? 
Well, I said, like, I've been in Cape Town, you know, I've been around close to those. I never heard, I said, well, when, when we go to the city, we just don't, don't do that, you know? I said, really? And I said, well, what does this clan thing mean? Well, you know, they name, basically, they, uh, they can do it on both sides of their family, the real good ones. Modern times, they're, they're giving that up, but a lot of people. So if you name your clan, it's like, I guess, for you Christians, it's like when they say Jesus' lineage, you know, they come from Joseph, then I don't know Abraham, all the way back to, to, to Adam. So that's what happens in, um, uh, uh, in, in closer culture. If you're real closer, um, you can trace your whole thing back. That's your lineage. So you know, da, 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 da. And it's important though, because here's what happens. If you say rapping to, you know, you're rapping to a girl, right? And blah, blah, blah. And what's your name? And, they, and if they come back like three months, you realize, wait a second, this, these, we're, we're, we're family. We're hooked up. So it's like, oh, man. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, um, the descendants of of, uh, of chattel slavery, we didn't have that luxury, you know, because uh, that famous case where right when uh, they, they were outlawing slavery, um, not then, but um, some, some growers of some slave owners from North Carolina, South Carolina, they were trying to control their slaves. I got this from a historian, I better put a link to where, where I got that. Um, I learned this a long time ago, and I just, anyway, uh, so the, 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 the uh, the song, the, the Songhai people, whatever, they they, um, they they kept on having problems with the, you know, early days of, of, of uh, chattel slavery. You know, people were rebelling all over. You don't hear that. So these group of uh, slave owners, they went to Germany. This famous, you know, well, this guy that does whatever it is, and so they said, well, you know, we have a problem. Blah, blah, blah. They said, well, what? Who are these people? They said the, the, the Songhai people, whatever the name was, and they said, oh yeah, well, uh, yeah, no, Songhai people. Well. Um, what it, what, it, what it came out is that the, the mothers and the, the parents, mothers and the fathers, they would tell their children this story of where they came from, okay? That made them powerful. So, if, if, so, so basically, the guy said, what you have to do as soon as you get them, you know, as soon as you have them, to separate them. Separate them, just, you know, they're here, just go someplace else. So they broke up the, 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 the verbal, the... Um, uh, lineage. I mean, the the the, the storytelling of, of the, the strength of your of your of your clan. The da, da 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 da, and it was very effective. So, so I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Now, here's the thing. So I've been thinking because one, you know, everybody's going crazy on this ADOS, and people have all kinds of opinions. And some some person said, said, oh, you know, uh, they, 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 why are you, you naming us? Blah, 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 Howard, they were saying. And I'm going like, wait a second. Who named who? Then I'm looking, I'm thinking back, right? Well, if you think like this, first, we, first we're captives, right? And wherever, coming over the middle passage, right? So we're captives. That's our first label. Uh, that's our first label. Then we get here, we, we get into a slavery situation, and we're called slaves. A part of that slaves is called slave slash niggas, okay? Okay, now I'm just going to skip a little bit. Then somewhere, you know, maybe, yeah, I guess after Antebellum, or maybe it was just, I don't know where, where it was, you know, maybe so. But we came with the term colored and also Negro. So I put uh, slave, nigger, slash, slave, slash, nigger, and I put uh, colored, slash, Negro. Okay, that's the designation. That went along for a long time, the whole, especially, you know, it went for a long time. Basically, as far as I understand, right up until the late 50s, uh, because I know that uh, late 50s, Carlos, early 60s, Carlos Cook uh, came up with the whole uh, term, black is beautiful. Carlos Cook's um, um, uh, a mentor of uh, 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 Malcolm X. Um, I don't know. Look up your history. Let's look up somebody's history. Okay, so black is beautiful. So in the 60s, we just started to call ourselves black. Now, this was super interesting. I would tell you, like, for instance, uh, my grandmother, we used to, on so you know, we had a little black and white TV, and some of us, this is, really, TV is very funny back then. We used to take this plastic, well, they used to have this plastic paper to make your TV color, color TV. You put it on the, and the, the, the upper rim was like blue, the one, the other thing was, I don't know, so whatever it was, yellow, and then, then green is about. So your color TV was basically a cellophane, whatever, put over your TV. Okay, it's funny. Anyway, so she would watch Lawrence Welk on, uh, on Sunday nights. This is before 60 Minutes. Lawrence came, came up in, in, into play long before. So 
all the time in law school, they always have, they would, some, they would sometimes have this, this black tap dance, it's only black people. And so my grandma would be sitting back, and this is when you didn't have a remote, so the remote was a kid, right? So I was a kid. So my grandma would say something like, no, it must have been later there, because it must have been like the 67 or 68. It was about 67. 667 this happened. And my grandmother would say, oh, is, is that a colored man? Is that a colored man on TV? You know, she'd say that. And I go look up, I go, I go right up to the TV. And I said, I know, Grandma, what color do you want him to be? <laughs> okay, it's a little inside joke. Don't worry about that. Part. Okay. So we were colored for a long time. Um, and then we, then we was black, so we, us young people were going black, blah, blah. And then we started to use the term Afro-American. Now Malcolm, when he went, this is again the early 60s, when Malcolm, when he took his trip to his seminal, you know, his eye-opening trip to Africa, he's, he ran into a cat, you know, African guy. He said, why do you call yourselves Afro-Americans? Isn't that a hairstyle? Isn't Afro a hairstyle? And Malcolm thought about that. So when he came back, you know, they still use, but then he, he started to use African-American, um, or anyway, somehow African-American got in there. Now, just go, just let me hold on African-American term for just a second. One of my favorite writers, you can even call me a denizen of, of Richard Wright, you know, in fact, sometimes when I'm sitting there in Africa, I feel like Richard Wright when he was in Paris, especially from all the stuff that's happening these days. When he was in Paris, you know, with James Baldwin and all this cast, they were th always thinking of coming back. Now, now Richard had writ written this book, uh, 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 The Long Dream, okay? And in The Long Dream, oh, let me go back to the Richard Wright thing. So he always wanted to come back. Anyway, he wrote this book, Long Dream. The next book in the series, I forgot, I think it was called Isles of Hallucination. And then it was supposed to be a third book. It is, the third book was completed. I'm not sure if I got this thing right. The completed, and it's sitting in Yale. Yale own, has the manuscript. So if you're a scholar, you're going to read Richard Wright's last, uh, not last, but you know, I guess it's almost last, uh, a novel, which was uh, which is a, a novel, it was a, a three novel thing, starting with The Long Dream, and then it went to this, I think it was Isles of Hallucination, maybe I'm wrong with Sigma, and then this last, or maybe the last one's Isles of Hallucination. I should look that up, but sorry. Okay, so um, in this book, The Long Dream, it's really interesting. Um, uh, it's about these four kids, right? Uh, uh, fish, four kids, and they, um, it's about, it's, it's a coming of age story. I always say, if instead of te teaching uh, uh, in junior high school, whatever, instead of teaching, uh, um, uh, what's the one they, they, they teach with Gregor Thomas, that, that one, whatever that one is, Teach the long dream because that and it has teenagers in there. It goes through their thing. It has everything. It has politics. As it has the whole thing about corruption. It has the thing whole thing about the, the the black upper class versus you know not like not, not really boule like that. It was it's an amazing book. It's an amazing book. So teach if you if you if you're in middle school or high school, stop teaching whatever that bigger Thomas the bigger Thomas book is. You know, um, um, do the long dream. Okay, okay. So in that book, there's one thing that guys, oh, they're, they're arguing, the kids are arguing, but well, you don't know what you are. You know, you're not African, you're not American, you're just in the middle of the ocean, or something like that. It struck me, I'm gonna say, African American, what does that mean? Are you stuck in the middle of the ocean? Wow, this is African American. But it's a name, it's, it, 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 it applied to us, because remember back then, we didn't have a lot of people coming from all kinds all over the world. You know, we didn't have all these African countries coming, or you know, wherever, or Caribbean. We had some coming in. This, I'm talking about the, the, when Richard wrote the book, but also in the early, in the, in the early, before 1965, let's put it that way. Okay, so, so when you said African American, we knew who you were talking about. You're talking about, you know, uh, 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 native blacks or whatever we call these, or uh, 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 American descendant of chattel slavery. That's what we're talking about. That's the classification. But after 65, when everybody starts running, they say, well, I'm African American too. I'm, you know, I mean, if you want to put it that way, Barack Obama, I guess Barack Obama is actually Kenyan American. But the point is, so, so we had that designation. Then, uh, uh, so basically, African American. We named ourselves African American. All these other things uh, came from, you know, was fostered upon. So in a certain really weird way, Afro American, African American. You, we, we named ourselves that. Okay. The next thing, super interesting. The next demarcation is the word nigga, N I G G A, as you know, as expressed by uh, Tupac. This is very interesting because Tupac made that up. And what Tupac meant by that, when he said nigga, he meant never ignorant getting goals accomplished. 
and never ignorant getting goals accomplished. That's what he meant by that. But you know, people, they just, pff, we do shorthand. So anyway, that quickly went out. So we just went back to, well, nigga, da, 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 da. But it's very interesting. But I want to say something about Tupac. It's super, super interesting. My appreciation for Tupac is this. I believe, like Malcolm went through certain things. You know what I mean? He's very smart with his name, right? Then, then he goes into the criminal system, goes to the, uh, the criminal j j um, justice, goes to jail, comes out, uh, the minister, you know, she has a nation of, is uh, of uh, Islam, is the spokesman for the nation of Islam, uh, Islam under a uh, minister uh, Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and then, you know, when he gets when he gets thrown out of that, and he gets break from that, then he, you know, he comes his other literary, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. Okay, great. But the thing is, Bob Malcolm, he was from, he was from the streets. He experienced real jail slavery. Now, all these other civil rights leaders in the North, you have, yeah, they went to jail, but they went to jail as preachers or whatever have you. They went to jail as a criminal, you know what I mean? They were, you, you see, they weren't in the population or whatever have you. So he knew that perspective. So and so he's informed by that. That's his lineage. That's part of his lineage, right? Even, even Martin Luther King didn't have that lineage. Martin Luther King is like fourth whatever generation, middle class, if you want to put it that way. Okay. So interestingly enough, Tupac, you know, he did jail afterwards, but Tupac went from, uh, um, uh, remember, uh, went from, uh, to, I guess, you know, well, well, Baltimore or to, to Oakland, whatever, have you, but he's crossing, so he's experienced different realities. So when he's speaking, he keeps speaking from this reality that that's encompasses a, a, a large landscape. A lot of folks, they in this one area and they just don't get away. You know what I mean? So, so, so they're only informed by, if say you're in New Orleans, you're informed by New Orleans culture. You know what I'm saying? That's it. If you didn't, if, now if you were uh, in New Orleans and then you also went to Baltimore, then you also went to, I don't know, Canada, you would be a different person. You got it? Okay, great. So anyway, Tupac to me is like the, the Malcolm X of, of hip hop, if you want to put it that way, but let's not argue about it. Back to what I was saying. Then, current time, so, so now we're mostly African Americans, okay? Yes, we, I, 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 but we named ourselves that, that. But then everybody else joined into a, maybe they didn't. I'm the, I guess the, the, when they, the, they don't say that. I guess they do say that their countries, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I'm, I'm Congolese American, I'm, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So now we have a thing where, again, we are naming ourselves. We are naming our clan. When I talk to those kids, when I when I came back, I came to visit the states in 2015. 2015, right? That's right. 2015. Now this is important. I was like, I was like, wow! I got to talk to. Them. I got to talk to. Them. So uh, my my historian of note, the person that I like, and, and because he was a historian, a historian for No More Radio, my radio program uh, in New York, is James Small. So. Luckily, when James was in New York at the time, you know, sometimes he went back and forth to Ghana or something like that. So I said, because yeah, he has a guest house in Ghana. So I said, James, I want a, I want a, a clan, you know what I mean? I, I need a clan affiliation. You know, I'm, I don't just want to be African American. I want to be a clan affiliation. I said, I so we went through this. I posted. I posted. And you just you don't have to listen to the whole thing. The very, very beginning is very interesting. What James talks about. And so we went back and forth and back and forth. I said, ah. Then later on that same visit in, in, in 2015, I talked to, um, I, I had interviewed, uh, interviewed Dr. Leonard Jeffries. And again, that's also some, somewhere in there. And we back and forth, what we're going to call uh, you know, African Americanists, so back and forth, back and forth. And so I just really didn't, it just wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling it, okay? Okay. So, so that's 2015. Now, little be known to me, at the same time, right about 2015, 16, maybe 2000, say 17, 16, 17, right? You have uh, Yvette Cornell and, uh, and, and Antonio Moore also having this thing about having this clan name. They, named, they basically named our clan the American Descendant of Slavery. Slavery meaning the system, not the, the person. Remember, uh, slavery. So I'm trying to say, or I think what happens in the world, I'm talking on a spiritual level, people feel things at the same time. They start working on it, little things. So some, something will, over some pop up, you know, a mushroom will, will pop up through. So Yvette and, uh, and uh, Antonio popped up and it hit because when people felt it, people are feeling it. They say, that's the, that's the accurate, correct de uh, denotation for these people who were stolen from Africa, blah, 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 went through the whole thing. 
So now, here's the interesting thing to me. So now we have a, a, a precise definition of our experience, our lineage, and whatever it is, and people are coming at us. Whoa, people are coming at us like left and You can't name yourself. It's almost like, nigga, you can't name yourself. I named you nigga before. How are you going to be nigga today? Oh, you don't like nigga? Okay, you African American. That, that's what you're going to be. I'm like, wait a second. Don't we have a say this? Can we say what we are? We are American descendants of this institution of chattel slavery. That's what we are. You can say whatever you want. That's it. <laughs> Beef if you want. And people say, well, no, but we're Pan-African. No. We, yes. <laughs> but remember, Pan-Africanism covers all those nations where diaspora is. So therefore, we have just accurately named ourselves within the Pan-African system, if you want to put that. We have given an accurate name of our clan, tribe within that system. Just like you Pan-Africans wouldn't say, say, oh, you're Marcus Garvey from Jamaica. You know, you, you, no. You wouldn't say, oh, you're, uh, I'm a Cabral from, you know, no. You, you know, the, the Krumba, you know, no. They come from where they come from and they, they're accurate where they come from. So, where we come from? What's the problem? What's the problem? I don't understand. Anyway. So, so here's where we stand. I am, not, I'm ignoring. I'm not beefing with anybody who, 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 who thinks they're gonna name me. You ain't gonna name me, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna prove something here. And here's the thing. Let me show you about names too. I got this. This is uh, an official copy of my birth certificate. Or this is copy, but somewhere in the official copy, they have the what do you call it? The, the, that embossed thing, whatever that thing, the, the thing, this is just a copy of it. This is a copy because, uh, you know, anyway, here's what my birth, here's why I can prove I'm American DOS. And this is also a lie, let me just say. In this birth certificate, that's me, Anthony Johnson, da, 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 born July 3rd, 1950, 615 in the PM, which for those people who are paying attention, that means that uh, my ascendance is, uh, is is in uh, is in Sagittarius, which makes me like travel a lot, right? My uh, my you know sun sign, whatever it is, star sign, you can say it's Cancer. It means I'm supposed to be a homebody, but see, I have this decan in Scorpio, which makes me like, and my moon is in Pisces. This messes me up. That's a humanitarian thing. I mean, I can just be pure warrior, which I get, which actually what? Okay, let me, I'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. Now, uh, place of birth, Bronx, New Bronx, and it has a hospital, Morrisina Hospital. So I was born in the Morrisina section of the Bronx. Okay. Uh, it says my, okay, my father' name is uh, Early Sloan, and he's listed, and he's 29 years old at the time of birth, and he was listed as colored, C O L O R E D. So I'm colored. That's, remember? So, see? That, that? Okay. I guess in South Africa, they got to they make me colored and not black or whatever. That's right. My mother, um, Cordell, uh, she's colored, time birth, she's 25. Wait a second. I'm looking like this and hey, you can't get no more A D O S name than early. <laughs> you can't, you can't, I've been all over the world. I ain't never met no early. I guess this is the earliest from the, the first, this is the first name. The, you can't get no, no whatever name than Cordell. Cordell is a black American name, A-D-O-S all the way. I ain't never met no Cordell, no place else in the world, but I guess they are, okay? So that's pure. But here's the trick. This is where the A-D-O-S gets really interesting. That's not, that's my uh, government, whatever, official birth certificate father. That's not my real father. And I only say, do they say the employment? Well, oh, my my they, the my father here says shoemaker, self-employed shoemaker. Self Doesn't say anything for my mother. Okay, and they've been not put down housewife anyway because my mama, <laughs> she has seven children, six different fathers, right? That's because there's twins in there. And that woman was, <laughs> shit, that woman was. Good. Look, the last one, my youngest sister, right? Six months after my younger sister was born, my mother contracted, they say, contracted polio. If it wasn't for that, that woman would be out there. I would have more brothers and sisters. In fact, here's how diabolical my mama was. Don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate my mama. I appreciate, I appreciate my mama. I won't get into it. This, that's for personal. Okay. So, but here's the trick. Remember I said seven different, uh, six different fathers, seven people? My father's the only one that she didn't even remember because he was a one-night stand. So I 
It's on my paternal side. And you know, we, one time, I, depending on rumor, there was rumors, right, that it got later on. Depending on the rumor, he could have been a traveling musician, which is kind of weird because, you know, when I, for a long time, I, wherever I go, people say, oh, are you an artist? Are you a musician? And I'm gone. At some particular point, in fact, I went to my niece one time, you know, and I said, you know, People keep on saying, I'm, I'm a musician, what are you doing? This is, and so, so like I say, well, well, you know, Uncle Anthony, you do have that uh, musician vibe. I'm going, and then I'm going to my brain, and my wife is saying, mm, I'm going to my brain right now. You mean this boy done dropped his seed, he done gave me the look, and I, I'm tone deaf, I can't, what well, I say, I can't sing, but I can't sing. I just, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, I, can, I can't play no instrument, but I do have my alto I my, my talking drum, I play that, I play the beer and brown, but those are easy. You, you understand? The boy, the, I should be real. Anyways, so, so, but now, through my travels, interesting enough, I look like the Garifuna people, the Garifuna people, from, um, they know from Belize, but all down the coast. The rumor is that he was a uh, musician from Panama, so he from Panama, so he's from Panama, Central America. And I've been to Panama, to Colombo, Panama, black people. I've been, you know, and I've been to Belize, and I'm telling you, I feel, ah, I won't get into it. My point is, I can believe that. But if I was going to go for, for claim as ADOS, you can, ah, I can't, I don't know anything about my father's side, you know what I mean? But legally, if you're going to go reparation, whatever have you, hey, I'm ADOS all the way. So we can talk about that if we wish. So, so that's it. So that's the point. You know, who's ADUS? Who's not? Well, you know, it's very simple. You know, where's your landmass? Where's your people from? Hmm? That's it. So let's not have any arguments anymore about ADUS and what it means and, and who is and who isn't. You know if you are. And guess what? Here's the other thing about ADUS. It's kind of interesting because of most of what they call, some people are what, um, um, Tariq and I'm saying uh, native black, there's all kinds of things. I was listening to uh, Yvette's um, uh, 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 transmission, and there's a, a brother that called, he called, they used to call him R&B, you know, or, or I guess it's uh, real blacks. Anyway, so we have a lot of things, but uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Americans of, of descent of slavery is the one that has hit, and it rings true to us. That's, it rings true. It said, that's accurate. That's what it is. That's what it is, and you can't take it away. In fact, I will say this, ADOS is bulletproof. That's just a little thing for me. T from the Patterson's taking a train to the bed. Speaking from a desk of the ADOS, letting you know when I only suspect.